Good morning, everyone. This is uh, September the 4th, and uh, this is Jerry, and this is my wife, Joy. And we're here back with you again uh, to finish Chapter 3 in Proverbs that we started a couple weeks ago. And we're going to finish Chapter 3 today, discuss that a little bit with you, and uh, I'm going to read out the King James Version like I always do. Joy's going to read out a Ring. She's going to read out of, I'm going to ring a bell. She's going to read out of the uh, modern Bible that she has. Well, it's the living Bible. Living Bible, Bible yes, yeah, living Bible. Again, he just said, what does this mean? In verse 31, I said, well, let me read it out of this and we'll understand it. <laughs> it does help. I understand that. Uh, you know, so I give in to that argument because it does help. <laughs> And, uh, it's just all the scripture that I've ever memorized or anything else has been King James. And well, so me too. It's very difficult for me to go back and re-memorize something coming out of another version. Because there's about um, 1,500 versions of the Bible. <laughs> you know, and I also think most pastors teach out of the King James Version. A lot of them. So, But anyway, enough of that. So we're going to talk about the rest of this in chapter 3 today. And, uh, Starting at verse 27. Yeah. In verse 27 it says, uh, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by thee. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Strive not with man without cause, if he have done thee no harm. For the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the possession of fools. Now Joe's going to read it out. Now you want to hear Bible. it in understandable language. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> All right, this is the living. Proverbs 3, starting at verse 27. Don't withhold repayment of your debts. Don't say some other time if you can pay now. Don't plot against your neighbor. He is trusting you. Don't get into needless fights. Don't envy violent men. Don't copy their ways. For such men, violent men, are an abomination to the Lord, but he gives his friendship to the godly. The curse of God is on the wicked, but his blessing is on the upright. The Lord mocks at mockers, but helps the humble. The wise are promoted to honor, but fools are promoted to shame. Now, I think that's pretty understandable. It is. It is. This one that says, don't get into needless fights. My friend Philly, you know, years ago, those of you who know me from our other channel know Philly was my BFF for years and years and years. And she used to tell me, Joy, choose your battles. <laughs> because I'm the kind of person, I'm going to fight with anybody. You know, you hurt somebody, or I think you've done something wrong, or I think you're totally crazy in your thinking, or whatever. I just say my opinion. Well, nowadays, and not just... Jerry, and not just me, I was listening to Pastor Dwayne Sheriff and Pastor Womack yesterday saying how people now, all of these godless, sinful people who want us to tolerate their sin and accept it as being normal, men marrying men, women marrying women, that sort of thing, you can't say anything to them about the Bible. Or they get furious. Talk about starting a fight. But these two preachers were saying, Still, we have to stand and we have to tell people what you're doing is wrong. It is going to harm you in the end and keep you from the kingdom of God. 
you know, if you're actually come upon a situation that you're faced with that confrontation, yeah, and that's true. I think true. we all do these days. But you have to be careful not to just go around accusing everybody of doing oh, everything no. wrong. You can't do that. Oh, but they brag about their sin. They brag about it. I understand yeah, that. Make it very, very obvious. It's like Phyllis said, you have to choose your battles. And sometimes it's... You know, it's difficult to just start going around accusing people of doing things wrong. But if they start complaining about their life and some other things that they've had issues with, and you recognize the fact that what they're doing is wrong and it's probably causing that to occur, then you might mention that to them or say something to them. You have to be... Well, know, and it's insofar as it bumps into you and your life. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? They asked Pastor Dwayne. This was really, really good. Pastor Dwayne Sheriff's just awesome. If you want to look him up, S-H-E-R-I-F-F. -F. He was our preacher here in Durant. His son's the preacher there now, but he's got lots and lots of uh, YouTube videos with his sermons, and he's extremely good. But this thing was something that they do on Tuesday nights from uh, Colorado, from Andrew Womack's ministry, and they have a live sit-down, like Jerry and I are here, and people can call in with questions. And then the person that's taking the calls tells them what the question is. And somebody said, my son is a homosexual and says he's married to a man. Do we need to include this man in family celebrations? What would you all say about that? What would you all say? What would you do? I'll tell you what Dwayne Sheriff said. He said, no way, Jose. Don't let the devil in your house. Don't let some. He said, "Would you let a prostitute come into your home? Your son was having uh, prostitutes, seeing prostitutes. Would you say, oh yeah, invite the prostitute over for dinner?" Um, uh, Dwayne said that if it actually did happen and the person did come to their home, number one, they wouldn't be allowed to be together. Um, number two, he would preach to them from the minute they got there till the minute they left, and he said. I'm sure they'd never come back again. So that's kind of my personality. Jerry's more tender-hearted and patient and kind. <laughs> well, you know, why I, can be married to me? <laughs> I mean, I, I, uh, I had a, I had a situation with my brother when he was coming to me for a lot of advice, and he was desperate in his life as to what to do. His life was a total shambles, and it's very it was very obvious to me what his problem was for a long, long, long period yeah. of time. But, and I knew and I thought there was some demon situations going on there, but him not being aware of so much of this stuff, you can't start telling people we are full of demons and we got to no, cast no, no. out these demons and all these kind of stuff. You told him about the addictions to the drugs and his brother never brought the drugs into our home, never. He brought the drugs into our home not to use, but, but he gave them to, to me yeah. so that he wouldn't use them here. Yeah, and Jerry got rid of them. Well, I mean, he kind of used us as a rehab center for years. Which is fine with me, honestly. <laughs> yes, I, yes. Uh, I, we didn't let him do drugs here. Personally, I feel like I was probably the best rehab that he could ever have because yeah. I, he was my brother, number one. Number two, I was well aware of the word and everything related to that. And I was well aware of what he actually needed. He didn't need more drugs pumped down into him, yeah. you know, to get him off of the other drugs. And that's what yeah. they do at rehab centers. And then they teach And the, the thing is, just let me insert this. His brother is a pharmacist, too. And the reason Donnie didn't want to go to rehab centers is they just get you addicted to a different drug. Yeah, and he just thought that was ridiculous. Well, there, there's a reason behind that. But because they're dealing with the general public as a rule, and they're not dealing with the spiritual aspect oh, of this, no, never which is that. where it really all comes from to begin with. It's all related to Satan and his influence on their lives, whether they realize it or not. But I recognize the fact that there was some demon stuff going on with my brother, because we would talk from time to time about those still small voices talking to him when he'd go back to his home. Yeah, yeah. You know, and. When he started talking about that, you know, he'd go back to his home and all he'd these things. He'd be fine for a week, yeah, maybe then, two. Then I asked him one day, and I said, do you, still, do, you, do you hear those still small voices telling you to go back on the drugs? And he said, yes. Uh. And I knew almost immediately what that was, but to confront him with that and to 
physically take him and yeah. cast out the You can't do that until him. they're mature enough to ask you to. And to understand what yes. they're doing. Because it just turns them off is, like you're nuts. Got him saved. That yeah. was the best thing. I know. Start in but, kindergarten. But anyway, that's what I'm saying. Start in Bible garden. <laughs> You do have to call a spade a spade, and if it's wrong, it's wrong. That's right. That's but right. But you can do that gently, and you can do that lovingly. You don't just throw it in their face. You know, yeah. like you're Almighty God, and you're the horrible. You know. Person. Oh yes. You can't do that. I've lost lots of subscribers on my sewing quilting uh, channel because of my stance on Christianity and sin being sin, and the Bible being the ultimate truth. What did? Um, Pastor Hagee call it today. What kind of truth? What's his word for it? Oh, you know. What's his word? Is there an absolute? Did he say absolute? Absolute truth. He said yes. Is there an absolute truth? And he said that somebody interviewed four college age kids and asked them, is there an absolute truth? And they came up with the craziest answers. Of course, that's what they've been taught by all these socialists that are teaching our children in college to be socialists and communists and anything but godly Christians. And these kids would say, absolute truth is different for every person. It's whatever you think it is in your life. You may think this is true, and they may think that's true, so it's just different for every person. No! This is the absolute truth, and it's for every person on the entire planet. And does this have anything to do with Proverbs 3, verse 27 through 35? <laughs> the wise are promoted to honor, but fools are promoted to shame. Yes, we were talking about fights and not starting fights. So it's never, you know, I don't ever want to start a fight, but I'll certainly start a discussion. And um, this has happened on my channel, like I said, and I'll say, well, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, and the people just get mad and run away. So I probably have a lot more subscribers if it wasn't for my absolute truth There's of the Bible. She's absolutely right, though. I mean, you have to state what is correct. This, is, this word is the only absolute truth that's in this world. I can right. promise you that because you hear lies every day when it comes over the television oh, or the radio or whatever. out of our it, government. There is so many lies cast upon you, your ears every day of the week here, That's every right. hour of the day if you listen to that stuff. That's you right. Know, but anyway, she's absolutely right. You do have to state your you know, your opinion because it's based on fact and it's based on truth. Right. If it comes to the point that someone is confronting me. Yeah. I don't go out looking for people and say, beat them over the head with the Bible. I don't walk into whorehouses or bars or, really? you know, but occasionally someone, conf well, quite often, someone confronts me, including my own children. <laughs> that's true. Right? Thinking that that's perfect. Oh, you should watch this. I've been watching this television show and I've been watching that television show. And now that I've been watching it, I think they can't help it. And they're just born that way. And this. It's the absolute truth. God says it's an abomination. He created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And this is what you also have to do is once you're confronted with something like that, she's absolutely right. You can't. I'm getting a lot of absolutely rights to well, go along with my I mean, absolute truth today. Praise the Lord. That's an absolute miracle. <laughs> okay. I still get an argument here. <laughs> Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say is here, turn that over to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one entity that can talk to your family member, talk to them. You can bring it up. You can talk to them about it and tell them what the Word says. That, they hear that. And be sure you're, you're telling them what the Word says and not just what your no, opinion you is, think, you, you know. know. And be sure and use scripture to back right, it up. Right, right, right. Back but, everything up with scripture. And they're going to get offended. Yeah. So be it. You yeah. know, I mean, our children have been offended at us because oh. bringing some of this stuff Many up. Many times. I mean, they're they, my friend and they can't help the way they are and you're a horrible person. That's right. Oh, yes. Both, both of our girls, both of them, when they were teenagers and were in school, we were confronted with this. Yeah. But <clears throat> it is the truth. My, one of them was actually going to their gay bars. Yeah. I was hysterically upset about yeah. it. <laughs> but like I said, once you're through with that 
argument or whatever and they leave your duty at that point in time is to pray that the Holy Spirit will convict yes, their hearts yes. and convict them every second of the day yeah. and bring it to their recognition, bring it to their memory, what you said, and so on and so forth. Pray God send someone into their life like yeah. Wayne Sheriff or Andrew Womack that they will listen to because they're not going to listen to me. A lot of times they don't. And what, yeah. something, yeah. Most of the time, most Old family buddy, buddy members parents, yeah. are not the ones that actually get them to change. Sadly. It's other people that come into their life. Oh, but, I listened to my dad. I always thought my dad was super smart about the Bible. Yeah. My father but was it's totally a different day, different day and age. My father was totally the opposite. But, yeah. I mean, but your mom. My mother, yeah. Uh, so, but anyway, I think you get the gist of what yeah. we're trying to say here. So what else did it say? The curse of God is on the wicked and his blessings on the upright. Hey, why do we not want them to live in sin? Why do we not want them to believe a lie? Because we want them to be blessed by God, not cursed by him. The curse of God, the curse of God is on the wicked, but his blessing is on the upright. So if you're living in known habitual sin, how can you be blessed by God for being upright when you're not? So the wise are promoted to honor, but fools are promoted to shame. Who does the Bible call a fool? Who does the Bible call a fool? People who say there is no God. That's true. It's in here. Okay, dear. We always go on for 30 minutes. You the very last verse say? says, The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Yeah. And you can see that in everyday life. You know, if you look around you, the people that live in your community and so forth, and I've noticed it in our small community here that the people that prosper yeah. in this community, or I know are Christian believers. Well, number one, they work. They, well, that's true, they work. But <laughs> I mean, a lot of people down here where we live who live on government support, and it's so obvious by where they live. But you'll notice that the people that prosper the most and do the, the best are Christian believers. And there are other people that don't ever prosper, have all kinds of problems. You'll, you'll soon see or find out that they do not believe a lot of this stuff and they have issues with it. Oh goodness, yes. And there are consequences to God is that. love. God is love. Um, but it's coming back. Somebody, oh, I'm sorry, honey. It's coming back to wisdom here again. You know, the yeah, first, yeah. It's like I said, this whole first part of this chapter of Proverbs is about wisdom. And it is so crucial to your life. Because without wisdom, you can't even understand no, about this no, stuff. No. Especially the King James Bible. <laughs> no. Somebody call, called in, these two preachers that I was watching to on YouTube yesterday, and asked the question, God is love. So, what difference does it make what kind of love we have? If two men love each other, or if two women love each other, or if I love my neighbor's wife, or if I love the prostitute, or what difference does it make as long as it's love? And Dwayne Sheriff said, the President of the United States, the government, no person defines what love is. God defines it. And he defines it as one man and one woman. Absolute truth. Okay, dear, should we stop talking? Jerry said, I don't know what to say. I said, I promise you it will come to you. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, um, God's definition of love is so much different than man's definition of love. Yeah. You know, I mean, God has unconditional love, but He also abhors sin. Well, yeah, that's right. And he will definitely call you out for that, and He will definitely take care of that part of it. So He doesn't, but He loves you as a entity that He created. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that he doesn't love the sinner. Yeah, he loves but the sinner. But he hates. What the Bible do. says hates. H A T E hates. Despises the sin. But he loves the sinner. Hence all the trouble he went to to give us his massive manual on how to live our lives and please him. Okay. Anyway. Should we just say goodbye for today? I think we're finished for the day. So next week we will get into Proverbs chapter 4 and go through part of that anyway. And then we'll cons cons 
I'll just keep on our, going. Continue our uh, study of Proverbs, and uh, hopefully you all get something out of this. And like I said before last week, if you have any comments about anything. We love to read your comments. And uh, we will do our best to answer it with Scripture, basically, to yeah. back it all up. Yeah. Everything we say, we back up with Scripture. It's not just our opinion. Right. So we hope you believe that and know that. So. Yes. Anyway, we will say goodbye for now, and uh, you all have a blessed week, and we will see you next Sunday. Bye, guys. <laughs>